Hey everybody, this is the Ask the Sensei question and answer webinar with me, Tish Hicks, the Master Sensei of the VO Dojo, and Sensei Jason Lanier White. We are so happy to have you here today and are looking forward to answering your questions. This, um, this webinar is so exciting, the momentum that it's, that it's building, and we want to hear what questions you have, what mm -hmm. are you thinking about, where are you stuck, where do you want to know what's next, because the way that we approach things at the dojo is understanding that going from I don't know to working pro is a natural, there's a natural progression of development. And wherever you are, there's going to be that next set of questions, that next set of things like, ah, I got this, wait a minute, what's next? And that still happens. I've been doing this for 20 years. Jay, you've been, you've been in the game for five and you just went, boom. Um, and, and it still happens. I still, have, I still have to approach my work every day and go, right, what are we doing? How are we doing it? What needs to shift? We're always doing that. So, um, excellent. Wow, it looks like we have a really, really nice blend of, of uh, like crazy nice blend of, uh, of where people are at in, in that natural progression. So that'll be great because we'll get a lot of different questions that you'll get to uh, see the questions that people have at different levels. And uh, good that uh, we have no one who it never occurred to on this call. But uh, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna keep that open. Um, oh my gosh, I just went, I just went 39 questions. No, uh, there's actually no questions. Um, uh, Billy has one here. Oh, okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. It's in the Q&A. When reaching out to agents about representation, knowing that they get a lot of submissions, what's the protocol for following up? How often should you do it or should you even follow up at all? Excellent. Tish? Uh, very astute. Um, okay, let me uh, get the question. Sure. It's in the Q&A. Looks like we have another oh, here we go. Okay, okay. I was just looking at the wrong thing. Okay, I can see you both. I can hear you both. Billy, okay, this is an excellent question. Um, okay, so overall what you need to do when you're when you're approaching getting representation here's the thing you need to, to keep in mind when you are looking for representation not seeking representation i'm seeking i would like to have a boyfriend i'm seeking <laughs> um, when you are looking for representation you need to be in the mindset that you are adding someone who is going to be um that you are hiring someone who is going to help you navigate you getting where you are going to, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the first mindset. So if you were an employer looking for a team member who was going to help implement your vision, um, how would you approach that? So would you go like, oh, they're so busy. Um, mm -hmm. You would be respectful, <laughs> but you would be consistent and you would be professional, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're looking for this team member. So that's the first thing. Um, and then I think it's also um, approaching it that way shifts everything. When you're on a call, hi, I'm calling to add someone to my team. Are you interested in making money with me? Excellent. That's a different shift of energy. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, in terms of the rhythm of that, then put yourself in their shoes. An, an agent's office is a busy, busy place, and there's a rhythm to a day, and there's a time that people have to get back to people. Mm -hmm. um, we have, we have a, one of our black belts um, just, just got his demo done, just put up a great, he did a great job um, of uh, creating something really uh, specific to him. And he, um, he just got signed by one regional agent, and he has a, a meeting at uh, one of the big three, at also William Morris Endeavor, um, this week. Um, and he got back to me saying, like, oh, he was referred, but um, like, he got a call, and then they were like, oh, should I call him back? I'm like, just chill. You were told, you, were told to, you got referred by mm -hmm. someone in the profession, um, and they said to do this, and they will get back to you in the course of the day. So finding that balance between and 
<laughs> right. Um, if I can chime in a little yeah, bit. Um, mm -hmm. So a referral is just that also. A referral only gets people to stop. It gets someone to do this. Everyone's in their phones and a referral goes, hey, pay attention, huh? But you still have to have everything on point. You still have to be a great talent. You have to be trained. You have to know what your your genre is, if you know what you what you make money in, what type of style, and you have to know what type of beast you are. There's a lot of actors who have no idea what animal they are. I'm still searching. I change a lot. So, but at least I know that many actors don't. Um, just as doing voiceover has changed the paradigm as a generational shift, so have agencies. Back in the day, I'm even talking about close 10, 15, 20 years ago, agents were all these all powerful beings, right? And no one could touch them and you would always have to bow down. Well, just like someone can walk into Guitar Center and buy a mic and start a voiceover career that day, agents are popping up left and right. So not everyone, and I'm going to be very, very careful, agents still hold a lot of weight and a lot of power, but there's so many of them now that we can really kind of throttle off and relax and understand that, well, if this one doesn't take me right now, then I'll just submit to this one or this one or this one. We, as the talent, have so many options. So many options. So just know that. Um, I've heard agents say, Billy, as far as contact them every three weeks. I've heard other agents say twice a year, so every six months. I've heard other agents say, I want to hear from you if you're not on my roster. Every time you have something significant that you've done, not a project you've booked, but something significant. If you just trained with someone and they said something great about you, maybe they have a great relationship, working business, personal, uh, professional relationship with that person. And they know that, let's say, for instance, Charlie Adler is very vetted. And they know, oh, you've trained with Charlie. Oh, I, I recently don't have someone on our roster that has your vocal range. Let me hear your stuff for animation. I'll definitely think and consider about repping you now. So anytime that something is beneficial to your career and you've, you're moving forward incrementally and upward, so there really is, it's, each agent is really like a prom date. They're, they're all specifically, they all, you know, want different things and there's different courtships. Sounds like you've been on a lot of prom dates. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, and the last thing, should you even follow up? Always. Mm -hmm. always. Always follow up. You need to, you need to approach everything you do in the joyous and relentless way that a toddler would get a cookie. Yep. What do you want? I would like to be at this agency. Um, you know, and then I also think that the other thing that's inherent in this is um, you need to choose who you're going after. Hi, you want to be my agent? Hi, want to be your agent? Okay, no. Hi, I would like to work with you because this, 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 and this. I know this, 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 and this person. I'm bringing this, this, and this to offer you, right? Um, yeah, so this is a huge, huge discussion. Um, mm -hmm. In the dojo, this is the stuff we do in green and blue belt. We work on, we work on, uh, green belt is about demo prep, blue belt is about, um, well actually this is more brown belt stuff, the, the, the agent stuff is, is brown belt stuff, sorry. Um, brown belt stuff, but we talk, we have a whole way of working you through what is it that you're looking for, and then how do you go approach the agents. <coughs> so. Um, but hopefully that's, that's helpful, Billy. Anything else? Uh, let's jump to Thomas. Excellent. Thomas is current. I am currently booking jobs via my agent, but I don't have a demo reel together yet. What type of thing should I have on my demo reel and how long should it be? And I guess I'll start with this one. Uh, that's even changed as well. It's the type of demo. Commercial is normally 60 seconds. If it's an animation demo, now everyone's into the snap demo or flash demos or quick demos, which are only, they top out at 40 seconds. And they're <clears throat> two character reads, first one in your normal voice, and then second one completely different, and then either some singing or something that con contrasts the other two. And that's known as either a snap, a flash, a quick demo, or there's another word for it. I can't remember. Everyone is popping these up. And that's good for animation. Um, right now, there's a huge shift going on. All the demo producers are saying you need an interactive and an animation demo. But what the agents are saying and clients are saying they just want a character demo. They just want to hear our characters that we've chosen to voice and bring to life because they themselves have enough imagination to say this character would be in a game, this one would be in animation, and vice versa. So um, 
that's a long discussion that we could probably get into, but I'll curve that over to Tish for right now so we can move on to the next one. Yeah. And uh, for somebody said, Jason, I'm not seeing the question. Oh, open question. Oh. Uh huh. In Q and A. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brilliant genius. Okay, I was looking at the answered ones, which is ah. a shorter list. Okay, um, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so um, uh, what the you know always uh, what what you what are you going after? What sort of work are you booking? And mm -hmm. creating a different demo for each thing. So if you're booking jobs, then it's probably stuff that you're good to get jobs for. So get copies of those things and use them as the anchor to your demo. A commercial demo should be no more than one minute. People don't have time for you. They, they love you, but they, they, people get it really quickly. So we don't need two minutes of time. Um, uh, so take what you have, anchor it. Find a producer that you really like, who knows this business, who gets you. And then what we recommend is um, you want to find spots that are not you're good for doing that, but this is an absolute reflection of you. Because that's what you really want your demo to be. Something that mm -hmm. absolutely just resonates. When we hear, when we hear this, we get exactly who you are. Oh my God, that's so Thomas. <laughs> so undeniably Thomas. So that's that's um, that's how we that's how we suggest you approach it, um, yeah. And I think if you're going to be playing at this game, and you already are, you know, in some ways, hey, you're booking, you have an agent. Mm -hmm. um, that's great, and congratulations that's on that because that's really. I, I know a few a uh, few of our colleagues started that way with no demo, but they've you know came into an agency or somehow, shape or form, received representation just off their pure talent alone and their training, and then they worked backwards and received the demo. And everyone is different in every facet, in every form of what we do. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. So now the easy part is, is as, as you're booking, ask some of those clients if you can use some of those spots and snippets to put on your demo. I'm sure they wouldn't mind because it's free. Um, publication for them also free marketing and whatnot so there's a good there's a good way and a good tie into that yeah. uh, congratulations again Thomas we okay. can move on to um, I'm sorry if I pronounce his name wrong but it's Derry or Dari Allen and she's in the chat field I'm jumping in between so we okay. try to get everyone within the Q&A but some of the questions are popping up in the chat okay. and she asks how should you name your website should it be yourname.com or something with voiceover in the name or something more creative? I don't know if companies want to deal with as someone they see as a company or as an individual. And Tish, you chime in first because I have a whole <laughs> dissertation on this. <laughs> I think as voiceover people, we are our brand. We, we, our voice is an extension of us and for people to, people don't go like, oh, let me get that Dairy Queen. No, they go, get me Tish Hicks, right? Because mm -hmm. they, when they hear my voice or they know what I bring to a project, they go, oh, or you see in specs, get me a such and so type, right? Um, so I think having your, ne your name is your brand in voiceover and then putting the word voiceover can't hurt, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Because, and and then also that's, you know, that's yours. And then maybe, maybe what you can do with branding is use a tagline, right? So, Derry Allen Neves, um, and I might be massacring the pronunciation of your name as well, um, but um, Derry VO, um, or Derry VO, um, a voice like, a voice, a voice like summer ice cream or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, that then, then you can use that tagline to create that other layer of branding. And um, this has been a heated topic that we've been circulating for around two years. Um, for instance, for myself, I have jasonlanierwhite.com. So that's the first thing that pops up is just my voiceover website. Um, I know many people that have purchased their name with VO at the end of it. Others that have their regular name is their commercial um, and their on-camera website. If you go to oneandone.com, you can purchase all of those URLs um, and org or .com or ninja, whatever your name is, for only a dollar. I think plus tax, it comes up to it almost two bucks, so it's like one eighty something or whatnot. But you can purchase johnsmithvo.com, johnsmith.com, 
johnsmithvoiceactor.com and you, you get what I'm saying, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can weigh out the options, what works best for you. What I know from experience, and I'm not talking down on anyone because I have plenty of colleagues who have an actual company name and then they are an, their own employee within that company. What I am saying is in, in the circles that I travel in and all our colleagues, what I have found out is that it is what Tish said, significantly easier for people to find us when they just type in your name and your website pops up versus a company name or a logo name or some pseudonym that you have that reflects to you because then you wind up becoming a sub page. Let me type up um, amazingvoice.com. Boom. Oh, it's John Smith. I have to remember that now. I can't just go to johnsmith.com. I have to remember this particular voiceover artist, <coughs> actor, voiceover entrepreneur, whatever you want to call yourself, is connected to amazing voice or powerful voice, whatever I said. And that's more work for me. So subconsciously, I'm slowly starting to shy away from that. <laughs> it's just too much work. I just want to type in johnsmith.com. Right? right. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. Whatever you do, you want your demos available within three seconds. Where, wherever mm. I come up, I want to go, first oh, page. There it is. boom, I would like to hear it. I've heard it for five seconds. Thank Animation. You. Click. Interactive or yeah, yeah, no, character. Oh, click. No, one has, no one has time to click. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and uh, oh, and a little plug for one of our uh, wonderful JoJo members, our Instagram member, Danny States. She has a new product called Voice Overview, mm -hmm. just launching, and is going to absolutely revolutionize how everyone keeps track of their voiceover business. Um, Voiceoverview.com. It also includes. Um, you can for free you can host your website through voice overview so something if you're just starting out need a place to to land is a great uh great place to explore and it's free and the the whole service is not is not very expensive um very excited about voiceoverview.com she's not paying me i just love her <laughs> <It's a brilliant project. laughs> um, so um hopefully that is helpful mm -hmm. yes um, okay, what's next, Jason? Let's go to Leland. Leland asks, as someone who lives in a very small market, I've mostly been looking online for work. What is the best way to find work locally, i.e., who should I contact and how? Excellent. You describe, Jason? Sure. Um, and I love this. When I was at the Mid-Atlantic VoiceOver Conference in Virginia, this was a question that popped up almost every day. Um, I would say start to think worldly. So start small first and you can go to Google, use Google as a actual search engine for you to populate all the animation houses around you, post-production houses, studios, all these different things. When you go to Google and you say, I want to find, you're going to do this in the search field, animation production houses slash, you know, media houses, post-production houses, whatever that work in animation, then pop your zip code in there and then also put comma within 10 miles, 15 miles, 30 miles, you will see a gigantic list of these agencies pop up. You're going to call these agencies. If they have an email, you can email them as well, but it's easier to call them and say, I was wondering if you could put me in charge with the person's hiring voiceover talent. That's it. Nine times out of 10, these people are extremely nice and they will be helpful and they will send you to he or her who will, ever, who will help you. The reason why is that none of us are doing this. This is so new and out of the market that even though we've heard Bill DeWeese talk about this, people literally are not doing this. They're not calling up companies and saying, I have something that you utilize all the time you use. Would you want to use what I have for to you know, complete the process of all the projects you're working on? Why wouldn't a person say yes? Of course they would. <laughs> and nine times out of 10, they don't want to be rude. So of course they'll just pass on your information or they'll relay you to the person that's supposed to help you. And then you'll have either whatever works for you, an Excel spreadsheet or an Apple log or anything of those people within that radius. Then you'll boost it up to 15 miles, 25, 30, wherever you're comfortable with uh, traveling. And you'll do that with post-production houses, animation houses, studios. I mean, the bigger, the better, the smaller, the better. It does not matter. You're trying to build a team of clients that are constantly throwing pitches at you that you're just going to keep on hitting home runs. It doesn't matter if they're fast pitchers, slow ones, if they're, you know, been in the game for 30 years, if they just started, you want to build a team of pitchers. So when one client has no more fastballs to send, they go, you know, my arm's tired. Let's take a break for six months. Another one steps up and goes, no problem. Here you go. And you just bam, crush it. And if you keep doing that, you start up building over the course of six months, a year, 
a whole entire team of clients that are just feeding you all this type of work that live very closely within you that will start referring you out to other clients who live even farther. Right. Yes. Excellent. And, and this locally and globally is how we can think about this now. Mm. You're like, oh, I'm just here. Well, who's in my town? No, 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 no. The way the world works and the way people need information and need information voiced, you can have one of, you could, ha you could be in the middle of Ohio and mm -hmm. have one of your top clients be in Qatar, right? Yes. Uh, that's absolutely something that's going, that, that's possible now. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, shoot. Um, and something I'll tag in with that. Um, Leland, that's awesome that you're finding your own work and that it's local. And I want everyone to keep this in mind. The work is all that's important when it comes to the work, right? So it doesn't matter if we're getting paid a dollar or a million dollars for a 30 second spot or a 15 second spot, we're still working. And that work is gonna perpetuate more and more work, which gives us more training, which gives us more experience. So I'm not saying you're thinking of it this way, Leland, but, but if you are, or if this is something that's popped up in the back of your mind, that since you've only been working locally so far, that that work is not as um, beneficial or not as prestigious as other work some other actor is doing, squash that right now. It's all work, it's all the same, right? All the same. Yeah, but don't do things for a dollar. Um, unless right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but work, this is, this is of course. a personal thing. Um, work begets work. And the more you value your work, the more your work will mm -hmm. be valued. So, uh, but that, that's a whole other discussion. Um, but the thing that I wanted to uh, say is on June 21st, we do a thing called a belt level call, which is like an expert call. Mm -hmm. uh, we have experts um, coming on for people who are working at a certain level. Um, this uh, this June 21st, we have an expert guest, uh, Jonathan Tilly, who runs a program over the summer called League of List Builders. And he runs you through a whole system of this, um, of how do ex exactly what Jason was talking about. So if you'd like to join us on that call, uh, just uh, write in the chat that you're interested in the League of List Builders call on, on June 21st, and we'd love to have you have you join and, and connect you with people. And that's what we do at the dojo. I keep like, oh, my, our friend does this and our colleague does this. That's what we do here. <laughs> that's the connection part is, is what we do. So good, good, good. And um, yeah, okay, what's next, Jason? Sure, let's jump over here to Jordan. Jordan, hi Jordan. Jordan has a question and says, an audio house who does a lot of VO commercial work Ask me if I'm repped. I'm not. How should I answer? You want to start, Tish? Um, not yet. Do you okay. Know? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, I, I think the answer to the question should be not yet. Do you? Know? Oh, got you. <laughs> do, do you know anyone I should be working with? That was literal. I took that literally. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet. Um, but if you, you know, do you, do you know? Do you have anybody that you'd recommend? Because um, yeah. And. It, it's nice to always think of agents as, let me make sure I'm not, <laughs> I don't say anything negative about them. It's always nice to think of agents as a group of people within the industry that are always saying, cool, awesome, what's next? Or what else have you done? Or what's going on? And the reason what I mean by that is, is behind, if you approach an agency and you say, I have this project and this client and they'd like to do some work together. You can also you know, approach said agency and say, would you like to open up the gates and, you know, talk to this client or talk to this client, this agency, I'm sorry, this client about this project and just throw me in the loop as the talent. And without signing any contracts, without doing anything like that, you can thus then start opening the gates for representation for yourself. Right. So you can you take can on the role of that. You can as a manager. That working relationship that you have. Mm -hmm. I call, okay. Two, two metaphors about this. One, um, I call that process bringing little birds to the people that you would like to be represented, mm -hmm. right? Hello, I have this relationship with an audio house that I do work with. Do you know these people? Here's a little bird. Um, I just had an old friend pop, pop, his, pop his head in the window, um, Michael Byrne, and I was like, Michael Byrne, you live elsewhere. What are you doing here? But he popped in, we had a good chat, and he's been doing, he's been doing some, he's had his campaign, but on camera anyway long story short um i tell him this metaphor and he's like oh like my brother is the vice president of leo burnett in chicago i'm like 
Yeah, okay, so that would be like bringing the whole turkey. Yeah, yeah, because if an agency doesn't have a relationship with the vice president of Leo Burnett, that would be a very nice little thing to present as something that you bring, right? Um, so, uh, and then going back to um, the agent or representation, not representation, um, mm -hmm. you want to think of doing work, doing this work without an agent is like being a day trader. Having an agent is like having a broker. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of money doing day trading. There's lots of people who just run their entire life that they are in control of everything. But just like in day trading, if you're not out there hustling, if you're not up when the markets are open in, you know, on the East Coast or wherever, mm -hmm. if you're not making every single transaction, that business is not happening that day. When you have an agent, somebody else is keeping it going. Someone else is keeping an eye on all the transactions. Now, you need to know that they know what you're after and how to invest for you but you have someone else that's representing you, right? So that's a really good way to be thinking about it. Um, and then another layer is um, why? <laughs> like, do you ever, you know, and, and ultimately, what, an, what, a, what probably why they're asking is not like, do you have it or not? Because we're judging you. Like, Because if you have representation, I'll go through your agent. Should I send your agent the contract or should I send you the contract? Is probably why they're asking. Mm -hmm. so keep on asking questions, but uh, good. And yay for everybody working. Hooray. Good, good, good. Um, oh, good. I see people are, uh, Diana's uh, uh, put up about legal list fillers. Awesome. Yes. Nice. Um, cool. Uh, Let's move on to Patricia. Patricia yeah. says, where do I start? I'll overact also all these questions. <laughs> people have been telling me I should do voiceover work for yeah. years. Um, um, my small question to that is, and just deducing that sentence, um, is it something you want to do? I, I would think so, yes, because you're asking the question. But what I read in the sentence is, you do want you want you're asking about where to start. But is it something that you do want to start? Are you thinking about it just because people have been telling you for years that you should do it, or is it something you're passionate about? That's my only question that I have for you, Patricia. And thanks for asking that. I'll mm -hmm. turn it over to Tish. Yeah. Um... Yes, I think I think that's the most important thing, like making a decision that this is something you want to do. Um, you know, in terms of where should you start, um, um, get an overview, get a complete, get a, get some place where you can get an overview of what it is and what what it takes. Here at the dojo, we start with the you should do voiceover intensive. Um, depending on where you are, um, we do uh, live weekends in LA. We have one coming up this weekend, and there are a few spots. I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, a live live weekend intensive or we do it as a virtual a virtual six-week program it's designed to give you a comprehensive overview and a little taste of everywhere where your voice can be making money so whether you do it with us or whether you do it wherever you are that's what you should just do you um, once again going back to the child who's like hey I would like to I would like to play baseball. I would like to learn how to bake. I would like to, what do I do? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Go start doing it. Just go start trying things. <laughs> now, one of the reasons that the dojo exists is that um, this natural progression, it's easy to go like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. we, stream, we help you streamline the process. And oh, it's always you making the decisions. We're here showing you a path. Um, so um, that would be my suggestion, but you can take that and run. You know, I don't know. Start where you are. Start ask questions. Try stuff. <laughs> so awesome, yeah. and be open to um, different facets. You know, you might like a, only a certain niche of voiceover. You might really love e-learning, but animation, video games, commercial work doesn't really suit you, or your heart's not into it that much. But you do know that this one area that you, you like a lot, for some reason, there's a lot of passion coming from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so just be open to that as you are asking these questions and you're learning as well. So you can, yeah. uh, in my life, I always say I always try to seek out the things that I either don't like or I'm not too passionate about because then that funnels and starts to narrow things down so I can focus on what I do like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in, terms of, in terms of that natural progression, mm -hmm. the first step is making a decision that this is something that you want to explore. That's what Jason was just saying. Mm -hmm. And in terms, of, in terms of how it works here at the dojo, the You Should Do Voiceover Intensive is designed to open your awareness, right? 
And then we go into the belt levels of the Mystery to Mastery program. The first one is Yellow Belt, which is about exploration. So, wow, ooh, what's this? I don't know. What is it? Let's try it. And that segues to self-exploration, what am I bringing to the party? And then into demo production and, and, and integration, right? So right now, if you're just starting, you're like, whoa, what is it? And yeah, let's play. That's all you need to worry about right now. So go do that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, we're going to move on to the next three questions, and it's 1034, so we're going to start being a little more succinct on how we answer these questions for everyone. Uh, yeah. So we try to get through as many as possible. We're yeah. going to answer Cynthia's question. Next is Lila Bersons, a very phenomenal, talented yeah. colleague of ours. And then Juliet Gray is next. Yeah. Cynthia is first. Cynthia asks, how do you feel about ACX.com for jobs? Or about Ali, I believe uh, the Ali Lear Learning Alley. Yes, for oh, free okay. audio books for the hearing impaired jobs. Uh, I guess I'll take this one. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. Whenever we look at work, again, even if it's work that we're donating our time or we're volunteering or if it's for some type of organization like the Learning Alley where it's free but it's benefiting someone else, these are all reps in the gym. We're still working out, right? We're still working out. So it's training us. We're getting that experience. And I would say for ACX jobs, pick something you're comfortable with. Pick a book that's either an hour or less because you're going to spend a, probably two to three times that amount on editing everything that you do. Pick something you're passionate about. You like romance novels or vampire diaries or whatever that is. <laughs> Pick that book and audition for it. If you wind up receiving the job, which you will, the project, take your time. Read through the whole thing. And it's going to teach you so much about how to edit very, very fast <laughs> by mm -hmm. doing all the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to teach you um, how to listen out for certain things and the whole entire process, if that's the avenue that you like to go down. What I personally think about doing jobs on ACX, if they're beneficial towards your career or if you feel some benefit is – uh, mutually being respected. And then for the learning alley, that's helping anyone that, you know, that would definitely utilize the help at some point in time that transcends generations that will constantly live on to help others. So I think that's amazing. That's, I think we all should be doing that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I'll, I'll chime in really quick. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. As someone who's been in the business for a long time and watched the transitions happen, um, who does, who, you know, came up in the audiobook tradition of how it, uh, uh, you know, of working with pro producers and publishers. Um, when ACX came along, I was like, all right, so um, I usually get paid this much for doing this and this part of the job, and you you now want me to do this, 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 and this for how much more? <laughs> uh, all right, well, I see why that's a good deal for you. So when I first encountered ACX, I was like, all right, why would I do that? Um, but what, uh, what it, it does do is create an opportunity for people to get started. And um, audiobooks, um, audiobooks in the realm of, of voiceover is marathons, right? A promo, a, a promo 15 second commercial spot is running sprints. And how you train, how you train for sprints is different than how you train for a marathon. Mm -hmm. So just inherent of the process of do I want to do audiobooks is like, I don't know, sit in your closet for six hours a day and read a book, see how you feel. Because <laughs> right? <laughs> if that's for you, if you like that, then yay, it's a good, it's a good fit. Um, and, then, and then the reps become the miles. You know? So if you mm -hmm. can figure out, how, oh, you just ran a half marathon, excellent, great, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, so I think, I think ACX, is, it can be a very powerful thing, can be a powerful way to start. Um, to get started, I think it's really easy to get ghettoized there and you need to understand what your goals are and where you want to be in the industry. Mm -hmm. Also, um, mm -hmm. audiobooks are, excuse me, but it's a shit ton of work and you need to make sure that the time pay ratio is worth your time because it's mm -hmm. really easy to get yourself in a situation when you might as well be standing on, um, standing on the, the ramp of the highway that, you know, in terms of you could probably make more money. Um, mm -hmm. So just being aware of where you're practicing, where you know, and where you're running your business, and then how to how to um, make sure you're understanding what the game is and playing it to your advantage, and then making sure you know where you want to go and how to how to get from that. But building your skills is always building your skills. And in terms of learning ally, those guys are great. They're lovely humans doing lovely work. Yes, that's a fantastic way to practice, right? That's that's fabulous. Get those reps in. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. 
and 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 the more you can be doing your work and like yeah i'm getting my voice in the world to help make it a better place better okay uh cool next lila bergen's ask uh lila bergen's vo see that everyone her actual <laughs> username is lila bergen's vo mm -hmm. so if another client jumps on on the zoom call with her or skype call they see that and they already know oh we're in a session with a voiceover artist got mm -hmm. it cool uh, I, she says, I enjoy corporate narration work through my agents, but I'm trying to procure more on my own. What are some marketing strategies for reaching out to a new potential client for narration work and types of contacts to connect with, and then in parentheses, other than obvious like video production companies, et cetera? Same question for e-learning if I have only done a few of those types of jobs. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And then two exclamation points. <laughs> um, hmm. I have a couple of strategies. Go ahead, Tish why well, I formulate um, these thoughts. Here's, here's one thing. Um, a, I think this kind of work is, is where like everyone can, I think everyone should be exploring supplementing with mm -hmm. this. It's, it's my next frontier. Like, Oh, I should do that. Hey. Mm -hmm. Um, so just the other day I was helping a, I was helping a student, a client and, um, I was like, well, I don't know, let's just poke around. So I think that the more you can in the same way that when we're working on our copy, when we talk about at Dojo, it's like, how can you make be nimble-minded? How can you make your mind dance about, I don't know, it could be this, it could be this. Let yourself go joyously into that process of exploration. I don't know. How could you? Let's think about what is the, what is the thing. So look up e-learning and where do you, where do you go? Um, uh, I think thinking through who needs e-learning, who makes e-learning, um, who do you know, what things do you know? What expertise do you have? Approach it that way. Mm -hmm. um, if you are uh, an alum of any institute of higher learning, go to your freaking alumni catalog. Hey, so and so just got promoted to the head of Boo Boo Boo. I don't know. Call them the. Hey, I went to such and so. Oh, really? Ah, great. Um, you know, so that's that's mind dancing stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and think like the client. What do they need? What do they want? Where, where would they be? I don't know if that's helpful. No, that's definitely. I would visit the websites, Lila. Um, I know you do a lot of that corporate narr uh, narration as well. Um, I would say visit the website, see what, if you can try to get within the first four to five minutes, what they specialize in. Because there's a lot of companies out there that specialize in multiple facets and different genres. But then if you really start to kind of click on their page, if they have a lot of videos or different things, you can really start to see these links throughout the whole entire website and you can focus on how you approach that client. Um, I would, one thing I would definitely stay away from is telling them the other clients that you've worked with or the relationships you have with, unless they ask. And here's why. Um, in our mind as an actor, of course we want to promote all the work we've done for other clients and with them, right? In conjunction. But a lot, many times when clients hear this, they think, oh, this person might be oversaturated. I wouldn't want to use Lila Bersons here for what we're doing because if she's worked with all these other different clients, I would think everyone around the world has already heard her voice. So we love what you're doing, but we're going to pass for now. So I would name all the different types of uh, corporate narration and specific genres that you've done that in and what they correlate to and then bring those, those clients up if they ask once they respond to your email or your call because then that gives you credibility. Well, I've worked with, you know, D, E, and F agency or clients out of here and here. Oh, okay, they're sort of like us. They're not really our competitors, but we, you know, put a lot of the same projects out that are similar. Great, they're on our level or higher or a little lower, but that lets us know that, okay, you're credible. Cool, you just jumped over that next hurdle. Yeah, and, and Lala, I mean, I, one of my, I was talking about this with you the other night. One of my favorite things about you, like when we first met, you were here and you were like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. animation was like, you were like, I'm going to do animation. And it's just been so gorgeous to watch you go, boom, 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 boom. Who do I know? How do I do the work? Do the work consistently. Boom, boom, boom. So take that that you already know, mm -hmm. and you know, as a proven formula and just apply it to this next thing. You know, like, oh, now how do I go after narration with that same hmm. This is what I'm doing. Who do I need to know? How do I need to build my skills? Yep. Mm -hmm. And we all know you're pretty unstoppable. So, yeah, keep on trusting that. <laughs> so. Moving on, uh, Juliet Gray, another very good colleague, a colleague of ours. She says, so speaking of agents, when you have submitted and haven't heard back for a couple of weeks 
and you're not even sure if they received your email, what do you think about picking up the phone? Um, I would know from, okay, so just speaking on when I first started in on camera, way back in the early, early 90s, even back then, it was not cool or copacetic to call an agency up and say, did you receive my submissions? I don't know why, but I, I, this is how I've tried to deduce it. Humans, especially in our industry, think that they're extremely busier than they really are. And everyone thinks if they have to stop for a moment to answer something they feel they shouldn't have to answer, oh, well, you've just wasted my time. You've wasted eight seconds of my life. I'll never get back. So Jason White is forbidden from ever being repped by here. And then also it's because not all of us, but many actors out there are known as coming from the please, please, sir, just a little porridge, please. We're always submitting. asking and wanting and submitting all the time. Um, <laughs> segue to that. I use an app. Uh, it's actual an email service called Newton Mail, like Sir Isaac Newton. And it used to be free. And now they charge, I think, $50 a year. But the reason why I pay that and I use it is because I'm able to track my emails. Yes, different people right now will chime in and say, you can use Boomerang for free, you can do this and snap, but the reason why I use Newton Mail is because in one area, I can see all of my email addresses. I can flag it, just voiceover stuff. I can see who opened it, when, if they used a PC or a phone or an iPad, I can see if they forwarded it. Now, that's how I know I'm going to book things is because I'll see one email get opened up in uh, Niagara Falls, and then it'll go somewhere to Portland whoop, because someone else is on the team. Then it'll open up somewhere in um, you know, New Hampshire, then maybe New Mexico, and then back to L.A. because everyone is forwarding this. This is our top three. This might be the top one. And I see that, and I get the notifications that say, hey, this email has been opened nine times today, five times on – um, PCs and four times on mobile devices, which is usually a cell phone or an iPhone, right? So I know I go, oh, I think I'm going to start booking stuff. <laughs> and then I can snooze those emails. If I si submit to an agent and nothing happens, let's say I send that out, poof, I send that out to Abrams and Abrams doesn't get back to me. I can tell that email in Newton Mail, hey, in six months, pop this email back up on your own throughout the same app, throughout Newton to remind me if this person hasn't responded. So Newton will say, hey, it's like that annoying paper clip from Microsoft Word back in the 90s. Remember that? Boop, need any help? It's sort of like that. Newton will say, hey, if this person doesn't respond in six months, want me to send the email back just to, to us, to you, so you can resend it or follow up? And I'll say, sure, let's do that. And that's been, oh, that's worked so well for me because the emails pop up and I can just resend that same one or reformat it or oh, cool. now I have something to add. Mm -hmm. Great tool. So yes. never pick up the so have, phone. So have the, <laughs> have the technology to know without even asking. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, that's yes. I want that. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. Let's see. It's it's ten forty six. Um, I want to make sure we end on time. I want to take a quick second to tell you about some of the stuff that's going on at the dojo, and then we'll pick up with a few more pop, like quick answers to 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 a few more questions. Um, obviously, we have a. We've answered a lot of questions. We probably won't be able to get to any, uh, to all of them, but I want to extend, uh, well, I want to extend a couple of things. One, we do this call every, the first Wednesday of every month mm -hmm. at 10 to 11 um, uh, Pacific time. So always like know that you can always come back and pop on the line and, and, and get your question in. Um, and then uh, if you, if you want a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time, um, Go to the website, scroll down beyond the, the pictures of the, of the programs, and uh, there's um, a place where you can sign up for a voiceover once-over call. Um, I've got lots of, uh, if you don't find a time, email, email our admin, Alex Quinn. Um, but yeah, sign up for a voiceover once-over time. We've got a bunch of time this week ready, so I'm happy to, to talk with you guys one-on-one -on -one to get a sense of that. So that's the first thing. Um, second thing is, um, if you're in LA and if you are starting, we have two spots open for the You Should Do VoiceOver Intensive this weekend. Um, it is um, one of the most powerful ways that you can get started and lay everything out um, to be in a straight line to a sustained successful career. So if you're interested in that, uh, type in the chat and we'll, we'll connect with you, um, or you can just go to the website and sign up right now, grab, grab those seats. <laughs> um, uh, what else did I want to tell you? Um, and there was, um, well, definitely I wanted to answer Rich's uh, question at some point in time, because I believe that 
all of us would benefit from the answer that I have. Okay, cool. For that. But so, continue, you know, Tish. I want to tell you one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you miss, if you miss that, uh, if you miss the, one of those few spots, um, we're about to launch a thing called Summer of VO, a virtual summer camp for grown-ups. So um, <laughs> look on the website for that, and we'll be keeping you posted about that. Okay. Meanwhile, back to our questions. Rich Rubin, awesome name, man. Um, he his question is hi. Loving the seminar. I have been auditioning for tons of animation, getting close, been called back a few times, but haven't booked except for one video game. My agents love my reads. Thoughts? So, Rich, you've entered this new exclusive club called I Can Do It. And <laughs> what, what I mean by that is in our field, unlike being a physician or a lawyer or even a plumber, we have to, we need other humans to tell us and give us a thumbs up to or give that thumbs up to other humans so that they open the door so we can move on. What I'm saying is, and this happens now a lot within our demographic with many of our colleagues, it, seem, it sounds like to me you've jumped up to a certain level. You're in this new pocket, this new group. And what that means is now you're a voiceover actor who can book all of these different types of projects, but now you're going and you're having to head up against, you're competing with the vetted ones. So what I mean by this, and I always use myself as an example, let's say a video game pops up, right? It's a Batman video game. And I read for a villain, boop. So we have Jason White here who has a very, very solid read. His read is awesome. We think we like this guy, but we're not too sure because we haven't hired him for this particular project. Who is he competing against, boop? Kevin Michael Richardson, right? He has credits that go back well into when I was watching cartoons and I still do, but when I started, right? So then they look at the team as an overall whole. Who here has worked with Jason? Maybe one person, two people, maybe no one. Who here has worked with Kevin? Everyone's arm goes up. Maybe two people don't, and they, but they'll chime in. Well, I've, grew, I've grown up watching him here and there and seeing this and that. I would love the chance to work with him. So it's unanimous. Okay, cool. Let's pick Kevin again. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do that I'm not good enough or I'm not getting picked. It's just how do you combat that? The only way, shape, or form I've been noticing that's been working for me, that I've been pac manning my way and slowly <laughs> rising and fighting my way and pushing that boulder up the hill is to consistently do what you are doing. Keep dropping read after read. Keep being phenomenal. Keep doing your thing. And every time an audition comes in, crush it because they remember this. And they say, Ruben's not the guy for right now because I choose him, but the higher ups want to choose D. Br D Bradley, Bradley Baker, right? Mm -hmm. But we, he's, a, he's always in the back of our minds. He's in the back of our subconscious. And when that time is right, when the plan is aligned, we know he's been doing all these consistent reads. We can even pull them up to show our client, Ruben's the guy for this. Oh, you want to hear something from a year ago? Boom, just as dope as the audition he sent in yesterday. You want to hear something from two years ago? Boom, listen to this one. And yeah. there we go. That's why Ruben's our guy. So hey. it is working. It's just taking a moment. And then understand that if you're in the room, you're in the room. If you get to those last four or five people, you're in the room. They know your name. And if you keep on coming up like, wait, no, do we know that guy? Oh, not yet. But you're in the room. I just, uh, I just had drinks with um, a, a creative director that, um, that sort of started my career about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen each other for years. But he was like, oh, I just wanted to let you know that... Um, you know, 20 years later, um, you, you were up for this giant ass GE thing. Um, it was between you and Ashley Judd and we went with Ashley Judd and she, he said, that's a testament to you. And it's a testament to Ashley Judd being actually a celebrity who is really good at voiceover. I'm like, that's good. That's good. But I, I had no idea that that guy is going to bat for me and I'm in the mix. Yep. So just understand that if you get there, you're one of five people that is in the room and the thousands of others are not. So keep on trusting. Don't, don't let your mojo go down. Mm -hmm. Let that fuel your mojo. Let, let that be like <sighs> right there, right there, man. It's just a matter of time. And then taking Jason's, say Jason's story, there's going to be the day, oh man, Kevin's not available because he's working all the freaking time. Jason, here you go, man. You're in. Boom. Yes, finally. And then, and then you deliver, and then you know all those mm. people, and then you build those relations. It's relations, relations, relationship, and you're building a relationship even if you're not in the room because your work is there. 
And uh, yeah. Cam Clark has a similar story. He was always the voice of Simba for all the uh, the Lion King toys and, I mean, the interactive games. and I mean, he was Simba for Disney. So he hears that the Lion Guard, right, uh, little small synapses, Simba has a son and a daughter, and his son is kind of like the SWAT team member <laughs> of the Pride Lands. He rolls through. He's called the Lion Guard. He's like SWAT, right? He helps the hyenas and the alligators, whatever. Um, when Cam heard this, he said, what? There's a new line. Uh, there's a new Lion King cartoon. Well, I know my agent's going to be calling me any moment, but they booked Rob Lowe as the voice of Simba. <laughs> now, when you watch it, you can easily hear out of everyone else, the whole cast that Rob sounds a little different. I'm not going to say off or negative. He just sounds different from the rest of the cast. What I'm saying is the one reason can put in perspective for me is why would they go with Rob Lowe versus him? Someone who's been doing the character for 15 years. Well, Rob can do the one thing Cam Clark can't. He can go on Ellen DeGeneres' show and talk to all the people who stay at home at that time who have the television that's on or who can DVR it for their children or for themselves if they like to watch that, and he can talk up the show because we've been seeing Rob Lowe in our faces for the course of well over 30, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. We feel we know him. He's our cousin, our uncle. He's someone we know even though we've never met him maybe. And so we, we think there's a familiar voice. Cool. And if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of it, he has a very big sex appeal, right? So <laughs> all the moms who have to sit through this 30 minute cartoon at least can imagine, oh, Rob Lowe's doing the voice of Simba. That's pretty cool. Or, or the dads or whoever. Yeah. So once he put it, once he put that in retrospect for me, it really does make sense at that point in time. It's just, that's what they wanted. And again, it doesn't mean that he got beat out by him. It just, that's what the clients chose. It yeah. is frustrating. It's challenging. But just know that, you know, it, you will get there. We all will. And, and two, two, um, two quick things about that. Um, oh, shoot. One, one, I'm going to, oh, this is a whole other discussion. But um, if you are interested in animation and <laughs> games, then be building your social media platform. Mm -hmm. get, get your get your get your social media presence up because that is in the mix now. Oh, yes. that guy has two hundred thousand viewers. That, let's go with that guy. So that's something. That's a whole another ballot wax. And then I was just recently um, teaching a master class at Northwestern where I where I went to school, and um, someone brought up like, well, what about? And, and they weren't stupid like that. They were like, so what about like you know that all the work is going to celeb, all of our work is going to celebrate. And I was like. Hold on, little Jimmy here. Our work, like, A, we're all actors. Mm -hmm. We're all in this. And if you go into the mindset, mm, the celebrity is taking my work. I'm like, you know, shut up. Shut mm -hmm. the bleep up because here's, here's your two choices. Become a celebrity or just be better. If you want this work, go get it. You can go get it. You can find your way to do it, but don't bitch about it. <laughs> or yes. become a celebrity. So shut up. It's all of our work. It's, you have no right to it. Go get it. So anyway, so how about that kick-ass way to end up? Um, <laughs> I want to finish. There's, there's more work out there than there are people professional enough and trained enough to do it. I'll say that again. There is more work out there than there are actors, voiceover actors, voiceover artists, whatever we call ourselves, that are trained to do said work correctly and professionally. So keep that in mind. There's more work out there than there's enough of us at the level to where we can do it. That's also a reason why the same people keep getting the work. They get auditions in, they go, you know, same top five are always in the same top five. There's nothing wrong with these actors, but they're just not really getting it, which means that we have to keep training. We have to get known. People have to see us. We have to interact with people in line, in person, in life. So they, they, we start to be more than just a, an MP3 to them, that we become a person yeah. who is awesome, who can, do, who can help them create this project. Absolutely, yeah. So we're, we're coming down to the last few minutes. I want to I wanna ask you all to, um, to do something for us. Um, whenever, we are, whenever two or more of us are met at the dojo, we, comp we finish up the experience by um, sharing what we call a dojo O. So a dojo O is uh, anything that over the course of this discussion made you go, oh, or oh, or oh, 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 whatever the quality of the O, something that made you go, oh, oh okay. Um, and then distilling it down to its most essential form. So what happens here 
is in these next few minutes, and we'll leave the chat open a little bit. We'll leave the chat open a little bit uh, afterwards, so you can you can pop these in. But I want you all to do this because it works on two levels. At the end of this call, we're going to have there's still 52 people on. Boom, <laughs> 52 gems of what you distilled, and see if you can get it down to its most essential form. How can you make it simpler? How can you make it simpler? So we'll have 52 gems, and we can share these with you. We'll, I'll, I will grab these things out of the chat, and we'll send you a list, um, everyone who's, who's on the call. Um, and the other thing is, this is what we do as voiceover people. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is how we want our brains to work. How do we take everything that's possible, boom, 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 and in an instant, in a millisecond, boom, distill it down to, boom, this is my choice. This is the essence yes. of this is what we need. This is what we do every single day with copy. So um, start if I could share. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Tish. Yes. Start share. popping your, your, write your Bio Dojo or your Dojo O's in the chat. Um, and Jason will finish up and then I'll sure. remind you some other actions that we can, that we can do. Um, and I just want to share one last thing that uh, the perspective that I come from, it's all about perspective as well, right? Wherever you are right now in your career, just starting intermediate, advanced, pro, whatever you call yourself, wherever you think you are, there's someone else wishing that they were at your level. And so what I see in my mind, let's say an audition comes in on a Monday and I can't get to it because of the family. I'm, I'm a dad also, or there's other things going on. I just can't make that audition as hard as I want to try. It goes and the time has passed in my mind. And this is not coming from pompousness or any pretentiousness or thinking I'm the man, but in my mind, I genuinely believe if I auditioned for that project, I would have gotten it. But by not auditioning, I gave that as a gift to some other actor out there as a literally as a, a bona fide gift. Hey, I couldn't make it. I'm glad you got hired for it. I'm glad you built that relationship. I'm glad you retained and got that client because in my own mind, I think that I'm going to book everything I open my mouth up to bring to life to speak because why wouldn't I? I? There is no other Jason. I'm the only one that when scripts are written, they're written for me. And I, don't, I never look at it as losing a project or not booking it. I just go, oh, there must have been politics I didn't know about. Cool. All right. Whatever. And that's how I always see things. So that's just a little tidbit that how I get around that and what I truly believe. Every, I believe that every audition I don't <laughs> book or I don't have the time to do is a gift I've given to another actor. And that that's, a, that's, that's a fantastic way to, to wrap up today because – the other thing, what we do at the dojo here is we understand that mindset and your, your ability to be um, on your, your mind, your mindset is equally as important as what you can do with a piece of copy, if not more important. Mm -hmm. So that is, phew. yes, excellent. Um, so we're just at 11 o'clock. I'm going to leave this open a little bit because there's some great dojo O's coming through. Um, what do you Remind want to do about the rest of the questions, Tish? Tish, there's um, a lot you know of what? Will, I, I would 14. recommend. I would recommend if you didn't get your answers, uh, questions answered, sign up for Voiceover Once Over to get a little time on our calendar. That's right. Or it's free. On, or hop on next. Or hop on next month and uh, pop in line. We're doing this consistently. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we the if you if you hop on the the Voiceover Once Over is a great way to get your question followed up. Um, and um, in terms of actions here, if you're in LA and are interested in the You Should Do VoiceOver Intensive, con let us know right away, um, contact or go sign up right now. There's only a few seats left. Um, summer VO is coming up. If you're a working pro, we also have a thing called Nth Degree, um, which is a weekly virtual workout with people from around the country, all at working pro level. So if, you wanna, if you're at a place where you wanna do this on a weekly basis with other working pros, Contact me. We have a few spots left uh, for, for the June session, uh, but lo would love to talk with you about that. Um, get on our calendar. Get on our calendar. Get on our calendar. We love, we love working with people. We love meeting people. We love opening up the possibilities for people here and here. So, um, Jason, thank you so much. It's just a pleasure to be able to... <laughs> to to roll in and uh, are you break dancing? <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm actually I'm actually uh, sparring. I'm actually like, dancing. That's what I'm doing. Like just it's just actually excellent to flow to flow with you. Um, Likewise. Uh, yeah. Um, rock and roll, guys. Um, I'm going to leave this on for a couple more minutes, cool. and um, 
Yeah, get on, get on the website. Oh, I guess I should tell you the website, huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> www.theviodojo.com. And uh, the other thing, guys, tell your friends about this. Let, let your voiceover friends know about this, about this call, about what you got out of it. Um, yeah, spread, spread the word. Share, let, you know, let people know on your Facebooks and stuff like that. Because, uh, yeah, it's awesome. And, and we love doing this, guys. I come from on-camera film and television, and this doesn't happen. That whole entire one, <laughs> no one really talks to each other, helps one another out. It just does not happen. I'm so <laughs> grateful and so, so in love with the voiceover community that I feel that I can't help but help give back and I can't book everything. So why not help all my colleagues, friends, family start booking more and more as if there's something that I have within me, if there's some knowledge that will help anyone, then it's not mine to, to keep. Of course, I'm supposed to share it with everyone. So if you think this is beneficial, thank you so much for joining us. And it's free. It's the first Wednesday of the month. Feel free to come back. And with any questions we haven't answered, do a voiceover once over. It's 15 minutes of free. Mm -hmm. Contact Tish or I and it's pretty awesome. I had one set up with Tish a while ago and it literally changed a lot of the stuff that I do. Yeah. So with that, thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to sign off our video and our, um, and our, uh, sound. Um, but I'm going to keep this open for a little bit more. So if you have uh, anything else to share, I'll leave it open for a couple minutes, but have a fantastic day guys. We uh, look forward to hearing your voices and until Peace, everyone. <laughs> take care. Bye-bye.